But I went from having confidence and arrogance to having faith. And faith is the opposite of fear. And that created this fearless approach that I have. I think uh, very three-dimensionally. I don't think in the black and white lines that I've been programmed to think in. And I, and I think in full color. So when I talk, I have to describe a thought in five ways. You know, we, we enjoy food that has multiple seasoning in it. We enjoy music that has multiple instruments. So when I talk, it's not a rant, it's a symphony yes. of ideas. And when you collect them, you say, oh, these are all these things that connect. Yeah, you know, I just tell the truth and telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. That's simply it. So now let's take like where there's, you know, people who have, uh, you know, issues with me as Kanye West, so they say, they classify, you know, my motivational speeches as like rants and things like this. Like, why is he saying that? Why is he doing that? Blah, blah, blah. Well, I've reached a point in my life where my Truman Show boat has hit the painting. And I've got to a point that Michael Jackson did not break down. I have reached the glass ceiling as a creative person, as a celebrity. When I say that, it means I want to do product. I am a product person, not just clothing, but water bottle design architecture everything you know that you could you know think about and i've been at it for 10 years and i look around i say wait a second there's no one around here in this space that looks like me and if they are they're quiet as f <laughs> so that means wait a second now we're seriously like in a civil rights movement mm. like people used to joke about do you remember our south park photo yeah i do remember how funny that was do you think there would be a Givenchy in the hood if it wasn't for that South Park photo? Yeah. So many people are just so f obvious. They don't even realize that when they box me in or try to verbally put me in some type of box or put Donda in a box, that they're really showing their level of ignorance. They're putting themselves in a box. And you know, people can write, write, write all they want, but what are people doing? And if there's anybody that's out there doing, they know how hard it is to actually do. And I'm like, a motivation of the doers if if everything I did failed which it doesn't it actually succeeds but if everything I did uh, failed just the fact that I'm willing to fail is an inspiration people are so scared to lose that they don't even try like one thing that people can't say is they can't say I'm not trying and I'm not trying my hardest and I'm not trying to do it the best way that I know how with what little information I get. So when I compare myself to Steve Jobs or uh, Walt Disney, Howard Hughes, uh, David Stern, Michelangelo, uh, Da Vinci, uh, Jesus, or whatever it is, I'm saying these are my heroes. These are people that I look up to. This is the type of impact I want to make on the earth. If I can make this type of impact up to this point, what can I do if, if you call Bob Iger and say, yo, give him a shot? If you call Oprah and say, yo, back this kid. This kid's, uh, kids were, uh, his parents were educators. He wants to educate. He wants to look at curriculums and say, how do we simplify that? Exactly what I did in music, I want to apply to product. I want to apply to education. This is what my company, Donda, is about. I could rap all I want, but without that Rockefeller chain and Damon giving me that Rockefeller chain and without getting a record deal, I don't care how many beats I sold to whoever, I couldn't have made it to the point to make Jesus Walks. And now, even as a celebrity, blah, 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 I've reached the ceiling. And the way paparazzi talk to me and my family is disrespectful also. You know what I'm saying? We bring something of joy to the world. When people hear my music, they have a good time. And I should be respected as such when I walk down the street. Don't ask me a question about something you saw in the tabloids. Don't try to antagonize me, because you know what? It's not safe for you in this zoo. You know, never think that I'm not from Chicago for one second. <laughs> so as I go through these different levels, there's times where I would use confidence when I knew what I was doing, and I would use arrogance when I didn't know what I was doing, but I'd rather use arrogance than to let someone diminish my idea of myself because that is what keeps us going. Hope actually keeps us alive. But I went from having confidence and arrogance to having faith, and faith is the opposite of fear. And that created this fearless approach that I have, and that's what now has made me the fearless leader that I am, that I've like crystallized into the leader that my mom always knew I would be when kids followed me in preschool. The leader that people saw 
when we change the sound of music, the leader when we change the, the sneaker industry, the leader in what we're doing with, uh, with farming and with, with shelters. You have to move based on opportunity. If you have an opportunity to make a living at exactly what you dream about, you have to pursue that at that time when it's there. If the opportunity isn't there, just keep educating yourself as much as possible so that when the time comes, you'll be even better at that dream that you had. What I keep saying is I don't wanna totally touch on this too long because I might like start you know, crying, but I would think that my mom would trade in every single Grammy, BT, every award for her son to have a doctorate, being that she was Dr. West. Are you a workaholic? Are you always working? No, I actually slept a lot during the project. <laughs> While they were recording? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I have a team and we work together. I spent a year and a half after I got out of the hospital uh, and I would go to Amoeba Record Store and I just start chopping up samples. And it was very therapeutic because I wasn't full yay. I don't know if I'm full yay now, a better or worse, whatever, but it was therapeutic just to listen to those songs and sample and go back to being 14 years old in my mom's house. And by the time it was time to do the, uh, to put the albums out, we have a, a whole team at Yeezy Sound that will help come and do the drums, help with lyrics, help with choruses. And I'd give like six, seven people ideas that I want on the song and I just go to sleep. What we want is a real shot. Not, okay, I'm a celebrity, so that means my line has to cost $10 a t-shirt. No, I understand about quality. I understand about fabrics. I spent 10,000 hours at this. I dedicated my life to this. Then a lot of people say, okay, well, you know, oh, you have to do music. I'm gonna keep doing music, but what if people told me I couldn't rap? What would have happened? What if people told me I couldn't perform? You know, I'm only 36 years old. I have other goals and other things, and I'm gonna use my platform, every platform, to stand up and say, I wanna make something. I wanna make the next Ralph Lauren. They say people don't stand up and protect their dreams. People are too scared of getting, you know, spoofed in a way. And the irony of it is so many people that are creatives, think about a creative person in school. When you picture them, you probably picture them all the way in the back of your class, sketching or maybe getting beat up. And I'm the one creative. And this is the reason why I went on stage. This is the reason why I did this. Because creatives have got beat up my entire life. And there's moments where I stood up to drug dealers in Chicago and said, you can't have my publishing, come and kill me. Do whatever you're gonna do, but you're not going to bully me. You're not gonna to stop me because my mother made me believe in myself. No matter how many people tell me, stop believing in yourself. Stop seeing what you can do. Stop affirming what you're gonna do and then, and then completing that in real life. That's the improper way to do it. I refuse to follow those rules that society has set up in the way that they control people with low self-esteem, with improper information, with branding, with marketing. I refuse to follow those rules. It's about truth. It's about information. It's about awesomeness. And the only luxury is time. The time you spend with your family. That's the only luxury. So this concept of luxury. And I remember the last thing she said. She said, you know what the problem is with all these students? As soon as they did anything, from when they were really little, their parents clapped. And the point she wanted to make to me that she said to me as we were leaving out the hallway of the restaurant the last time I saw her was, don't clap. You have to push them. You have to drive them. I remember the first time when North climbed all the way to the top of the stairs. And I'm trying to say that Kim would have grabbed her by third stair. <laughs> but she felt like she had to impress me and be more dynamic or hit the highest point that she had ever, you know, had ever hidden in her life. And Louise was really hard and, you know, difficult with the students, but I felt like when you like Celine, when you like McQueen, all these things that have inspired us, I'm just talking directly about fashion, it's because there were people that pushed that hard. And, you know, not to defend myself, but just to take this opportunity because I have the mic, it's not someone else's mic, it's my mic, I can talk right now. Uh, <laughs> um, I feel a responsibility to push in the world. I feel a responsibility in my position to be like, this is some bullshit. 
Am I the only one here that's not crazy? Am I the only one here that's not afraid of losing their Samsung deal right now? <laughs>